You've probably already seen this type of quick response or QR code in magazines, on posters or on TV. They're actually not new and have been commonly used in manufacturing since 1994. However, it's only in the last couple of years they've been used more actively with the public, usually to launch products or provide promotional offers. A QR code is basically a two-dimensional barcode. When you scan them, they can link to website pages, pictures, audio, video, text, map locations, or even interactive games. Basically, anything you can access over the net. Three-quarters of us now have a mobile phone, and half of adults have a modern smartphone or device. Something like an iPhone, for example. And these types of devices, a bit like this one, tend to have a reasonable quality camera. They allow you to download small applications onto them, and they enable you to browse the internet when you're away from home. What we've recognised in the heritage sector is that there's great potential in the use of these sort of QR codes to help people of all ages that visit UK heritage sites. A special new research project is now being run as part of a Weald and Downland Building Conservation MSc course. We're going to need your help to understand in detail how QR codes can best provide interesting online information for visitors to UK heritage sites. To do this, a trial of QR codes is being run at four different types of site in the south of England. The aim is to see how these codes can best help visitors to appreciate our unique buildings, conservation and heritage, and to aid people of all ages understand our history and culture more deeply. The easiest way to show how these codes work is to demonstrate how you use them. I'm deliberately using um, an older phone here, uh, but it's actually much easier to scan them on the newer phones that 50% of us have. Um, basically, to scan a code you'll need three things. A phone or device with a camera that you point at the code, um, the ability to access the internet to go to the web page, and a small application installed or app on your phone um, to actually scan the codes. Don't worry if you haven't got the QR scanner, it's free to download from sites like iNigma for almost all phone types. So basically what we're going to do now is actually uh, show a code in action. On my phone, uh, in this case um, this is an HTC, I select the um, scanning app. Uh, as you can see, you've actually got a square box in which I need to focus the code in front of me into. As I get closer to the code, um, within about a foot, it immediately picks up the code, so we saw that within three seconds, and what it says is, would I like to go to this link? If you're using an iPhone, uh, it's much simpler on an Android phone, but basically pretty well every phone works within 10 to 15 seconds. If you haven't got time to read the web page the link goes to, the great advantage is you can save the page link and then read it later on at your leisure. So that's basically it. And these are the types of code that we'll see as well. So what are the advantages of QR codes in heritage and conservation? Well, compared to things like large visitor site interpretation boards, QR codes are cheap to create, easy to cite, like on these signposts or way markers, and they can be easily replaced if they get damaged. In practical terms, this means that for the same money, we can give you more information at more points of interest. Most importantly, the majority of interesting UK heritage sites, like Castle Ruins or the South Downs National Park, for example, can't offer instant access to a visitor centre or a site expert all the time when you're out and about. So QR codes give the ability to offer all the information a tour guide could provide you at points around a visitor site in a quick self-service way with the information when you want it. We can also produce QR codes to almost any size, so you find them easy to spot. But the small size of them means that we can avoid having a negative impact on your visual enjoyment of a beautiful natural location. The mobile website pages each code links to can also be changed and updated over time, so they won't go out of date either. Many ideas about how to use QR codes are still new, and that's why we'd like you to help us with this research to develop and improve their use at four trial visitor sites. From June 2012, you'll be able to see these codes at trial locations in the South Downs National Park and on the South Downs Way, Dover Castle in Kent, Boxgrove Priory and Bramber Castle. At each site, there'll be a place to download the QR reader for your phone or device if you don't have it already, and also the chance to take part in our online research questionnaire to find out from your site visit what your experience was of actually using the QR codes. Thanks in advance for your help. If you need more information or you'd like to download a fact sheet about QR codes, find out how to use them, or discover a bit more about this research trial, just go to www.12bc.co.uk and visit the QR codes menu on the homepage. Thank you. I hope you enjoy using QR codes.